Hello friends and enemies. Welcome to or back to Happy For Now. It's me Isabel here with my Romance Lady update for you for the month of September. Bow called in August and October two different times. Listen, we're here. We're here. It's been a month. I do have things for you this month. I feel like this month was a little busier than I expected. Uh, as always, I cover what I see <laughs> and uh, if you think I missed something, please let me know down below in the comments and or you can always send me a message with what you think I missed so I can cover it next month. But we're gonna dive right in to this month's situation. First thing that kicked the month off, which is No Place for Devils by Santana Knox and Amy Oliveras. This situation, I, I have a theory and I will tell you my theory later, but I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown. My big caveat with the situation is that if you are not part of the Mexican or Latina community, please, I'm begging you, do not engage. Listen to what happened. Take learnings from what happened, maybe, on how to handle things, but do not engage, okay? Because I think this is a situation that part of the reason it got out of hand is a lot of people were engaging that maybe shouldn't have been. But also, sometimes, as white people, we need to sit back and hear about a situation and understand what happened and why it was harmful and also be able to like recognize that because just because a thing is problematic doesn't mean you can't read it and just because you can write a thing doesn't mean you should write a thing. I hope this makes sense. That's a theme for this month almost. So this book came out. This is a cartel motorcycle club romance dystopian apocalyptic setting. This follows a hero who is Mexican and a heroine who is Irish, apparently. And some, there was call outs around the plot devices used for this book. I'm going to spoil things right now uh, because I think that's the only way to talk about it. Basically, one of the plot devices that caused a large call out is the fact that our heroine was using the hero to get her papers uh, and be a citizen. I've lived in a lot of areas with a lot of immigrants and you know, I lived in South Florida for a long time as a kid. Like, I remember the news, okay? And I have heard people say these things to people of color living in areas, uh, Latinas especially, and other, other immigrants around are these things being done just so you can get your papers, just so you can be a resident, just so you can... And that... That's gross. And I just don't understand how um, two people that I'm pretty sure both authors are immigrants and or children of immigrants felt like this was like a good plot device to put in the book personally. Like that, that pinged my like, that's weird. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, so that was the main call. That was one of the main call outs. I will link to some of those videos for you down below to go watch on TikTok. I think they're really informative as to what the issues were. So this creator uh, did a wonderful job. It was very, honestly, I felt like pretty kind in asking like, did you have sensitivity readers? Did anyone point this out to you? But instead of doing what I think more people need to do, Santana and Amy didn't step back and reevaluate. They basically like had a phone call with this reviewer and got into it with her. It was very weird and uncomfortable in my opinion. And I just, like, I don't know. I, I have such weird boundaries with authors. Like, I love so many authors, but I feel weird to, like, and I think it's because of these, like, these sort of situations that happen. I, I just have such hesitancy for building bonds with authors to an extent. So, yeah, they basically, in response to their conversations with this reviewer, decided to just pull the hero's identity completely out of the book. Like, that's weird to me. I don't know. I just, that, that's just weird. I don't know that you can strip just that one element and it's still not being read as that type of character. And then also when this reviewer called that out, another author, I'm not going to name names here because one of the things, it's not that I don't want to name names. One of the things I want to remind people here is when things happen in communities that we're not a part of, if you're a white person watching this, which I'm going to assume a lot of my viewers are, we have to be careful how we engage and what choices we make because people will take any and every reason to remove an author of color from their TBR. And I don't want to give you that reason, so I'm not going to tell you this author. You can, if you want to go dig and find it, go for it. That's how I feel. But yeah, an author actually removed this reviewer from our art team because of this situation. And I felt like that was also 
a very weird move on her part. So I am currently like in the hesitant phase with both of these authors. That's my plan. Currently I may or may not read books from them. I really don't know yet because their reaction to criticism for me just felt a little extreme. I also again feel like it depends on how public of a reviewer you are, what spaces are you in, where are you reviewing things on what that means, you know, because somebody with a platform elevating certain authors is very different than somebody just reading a book. Uh, and I did have, I was really excited to read Heartless Heathens. I was really excited for that book. I was actually going to read it this October. And now I don't know. I just don't know right now. I really don't know if I want to read it or not. I'm, I'm very torn. I, I'm disappointed because I was like very excited for that book. And I also was excited for No Place for Devils, but that is one that I'm definitely not reading. After this situation, I have no desire to read it. And that sucks too, because I'm always looking for like Motorcycle Club and like books like that, like that give that vibe that are not just white authors. Um, and I'm always excited when we see authors of color exploring this. And I always enjoy their books in these like domains of like darker romance. So yeah, it's just disappointing at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, just this, this kind of like all went down very quickly on TikTok. And one thing I want to note is I think, uh, TikTok in particular is fueling this need to respond immediately and with urgency to any and all things. And that's, that's just not possible. You know, I think sometimes you have to take a step back. You have to evaluate things to be able to respond appropriately and to process what is being said to you. You know, sometimes that initial response isn't the right response. And I think there's something to be said to be like, hey, I see this, I'm going to get back to you. I want to sit with it before I respond because I don't, you know, I need to process it or even just not, not looking at it. But I know, again, that also leads to the, the other side of this, which is they didn't respond to me. They weren't quick enough about it. They didn't address this quickly. But I just think we've got to find a balance here because not responding and responding too quickly are both the wrong choices, generally speaking. And yeah, I just I'm seeing it more and more on TikTok when things happen where there's this like idea that you need to like respond immediately to any and all criticisms. It's weird. All right, we're gonna continue with our negative stuff. I do have like a fun thing at the end, I promise. <sighs> y'all, y'all. Miss Liz Tom Ford got picked up by Berkeley with her uh, books that the girlies wanna call black romance. And they're not black romance because they're written, they're not black romance, they're written by a white author. And some people don't even realize these characters are black. And that is the right move. The first book in the series, I think it's the first book. Anyways, here's the graphic. Starting in February, 2024 for re-release by Berkeley. Yeah, that's right. Black History Month. Are we surprised? I am disappointed and yet also unsurprised because listen, here's the deal. Berkeley and I, we're not on good terms. I, I've got Berkeley books I like. Don't get me wrong. I got Berkeley authors I like. But Berkeley and another book publisher that starts with a B like to get into it, like to stir up trouble, like to not think about anything. And that, that that includes publishing a book by a white woman featuring black main characters in Black History Month. And then being radio, radio silent on the issue. Not even a, oh yeah, we'll push that a month. I like, again, when this book started to blow up, like when the first incident happened in which there were call outs about how she spoke about a black woman's hair in her book, like her main character, and other things. I just feel like when that happened, we put her on the map. We put her on the spot. We made that this is this that that caused it. You know, is there a world in which you can read these books and enjoy them, but also recognize the problematic contents inside? Yeah, you could. But that doesn't mean she deserves a traditional publishing deal that takes away from someone who actually writes these books with these representations. I don't know. I'd love to know y'all's thoughts. I personally am just, like I said, disappointed and unsurprised because I feel like this is what happens when a book gets too much attention and it, even if it's bad attention, it doesn't matter because let's get it on the shelves and sell more. All right, let's talk about Book Bonanza, everybody's favorite charity book event. Um, <laughs> I wasn't going to talk about Book Bonanza, but they did their ticket raffle this year. So you need to fill out a form. Are you a subscriber to the book box? Have you attended before? And they picked names off of an Excel spreadsheet. They didn't randomize them. They just picked people 
So basically, like, they admitted to this. Like, here's the Facebook post, first of all, which I'm going to read to you. This is the Facebook page post. It says, a few people have commented about hiring more staff. We could. We could also pay $18,000 for a name badge printing software to make the check-in process easier. We could pay for a lot of technology that would make it my life easier, or we could top it out and donate more money. Every decision we make and every vendor we hire, we tell them a dollar we spend is a dollar we don't donate. Most of our vendors are partners in this mission. Yes, we could be more efficient, but sometimes it's a choice that we make. I do appreciate the grace you give us and the patience you show when we make mistakes and things take a bit longer. Also in full disclosure, sometimes it's that I don't spreadsheet very well. This was after like the debacle with their ticketing. So uh, yeah, I just like, it's not that I want a 10 book bonanza because like my parents are like not even 20 minutes to the event. So if I got a ticket, like it's cool. I don't have to pay for a hotel. That makes it appealing. But also I, to me, this all feels very holier than thou. Like I am better than you. We are better than everyone because we give all our money away. But if it's not a good event because you won't spend money on things to streamline the process and make it easier for you to make money because sometimes you do have to like invest to make it easier and to make it more profitable that's just a red flag to me i don't know it's just a red flag all right our last negative item of the uh month is the fairy lou romanticy launch oh my god okay so one love my members y'all are killer because you brought this to my attention uh, and, and it was funny because when we were on the Nashville book trip, Jess and I were talking about just like the general mess of fairy loot. And then this happened <laughs> like right around then. So basically, fairy loot told people last May to sign up for a wait list for the launch of their new romanticy line because, you know, like it's the hot thing, right? So they tell people to sign up. They are saying like, oh, we'll send invites from the list. That's how we're going to do this one. And then they turned around to launch and said, oh, we're sending invites to active subscribers first. And people were very pissed, rightfully so, because what Fairy Loot normally puts out, like fantasy and stuff, isn't necessarily what people who read Romanticy always want. Um, I think they do YA too. I don't know. I don't pay a ton of attention because it's just not like, like I have like my special edition um, Cinder set, the Marissa Myers books, but like I don't, like I just grab those kinds of things from them. Uh, so yeah, they <laughs> launched and just sent out emails to their active subs. And then they were like, if there's any left, we'll give them to the wait list. So complete opposite of the original plan. And then they turned around and were like, okay, we'll split it 50-50 between the wait list and active subs. I was like, oh boy. And then they completely walked it back and were like, no, 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 we take it all back. We will send it to the wait list first. We're going to go with the original plan. And I just, like, book boxes are out of control. Like, I just think book boxes are out of control. I, like, almost have no appeal to, like, I like them. I don't dislike them. But, like, I don't want to subscribe to one monthly because I don't like to buy books I haven't read. And then I get frustrated because I feel like a lot of times we're getting the same, like, five to ten books from, like, the romance genre republished in special editions. And I just want to be like, can we get, can we get some other stuff? That'd be cool. Uh, which is, I feel like, why authors are often doing their own special editions that you can get on Amazon, which is what I prefer <laughs> at the end of the day. Because that's just, this is not, I don't know. It's just not that big a deal. Like, the the book box craze, I, I think, is just out of control. But yeah, I just, Fairy Loot, what were you thinking? You can't tell people one thing and then just go do a different thing and then be like, oh, no, I'm sorry, we messed up. We'll just, We'll change it back. Okay, and last but not least, I just want to talk about Stuff Your Kindle Day again. So this happened last month, the next one's in December, and I just gotta say, criticisms aside, I understand there are books not for everyone on Stuff Your Kindle Day as far as romance readers go, but I saw the stats this, this time, and I was really excited because we were over, like it was over 200 authors of color involved this time, and that was even more than last round, and I feel like I got to pick up a lot of authors that I hadn't heard of, which is what I used Stuff Your Kindle Day for. Like, I pick up, I like to pick up books by authors I've not read from usually and try them, because why not? And I feel like that's a really nice progress to see for them. I feel like they're making, like, incremental changes, which is what has to happen for things to change, and I'm really excited about it. I think it was just very exciting that qu quite a few more authors were on the list this time. 
I totally, again, understand the criticisms people have about the day and like how the event works. So I know that like quite a few of the authors from last round were out like promoting it and being like, do you want to help? Like, do you want to join us? And yeah, I'm just really happy with who all I picked up and to see the growth. I think it seems like a really good event. I saw even more people promoting it than last time. Like, I don't know. I just, it gave me a little bit of hope, a little bit of joy. So I'm really excited to see what the next event brings to us as far as a selection of authors. Uh, if you made it this far, let me know what your favorite drama of September was, uh, what your favorite, like, just mess was. And if you don't want to do that, leave me a book stack emoji. <laughs> if uh, you didn't know and you want early access to Romance Landia, you can become a supporter of my channel for Romance Landia supporters or the friends level, and you will get this a couple days before it goes up every time. And if you just want to be my friend anywhere on the internet, I've got links for all that down below, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye! Come with me, I'm not really asking We'll get away to a place where we don't know About to see the world in action What we can be, life with no distractions We'll get away, this is what we're waiting